Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Juan Carlos Brando, and thank you for uh, joining us one more time in this Q&A show with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has been working on the immigration field for over 45 years, and she has been uh, helping thousands of families every year, um, bringing them the information or giving them the relief that they need in order to have a good life here in the United States or to get a work permit or to get an immigration relief, uh, family petitions, asylum applications, uh, U visa, and a lot of other uh, benefits for immigrants in the United States. And of course, we cannot forget about the green card or citizenship that a lot of people have had through the attorney Margaret W. Wong and her experience. So thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for having us today. How are you feeling? I'm very good, and thank you. Thank you so much for having me today, Ms. Wong. And well, I would like to start uh, by asking about what is going on in the United States right now. Um, a lot of people are concerned about what happened a couple of days ago in the state of Texas, where at least 53 people died trying to make it to the United States. But the question is, how could this happen? Um, the, they are saying about uh, getting more checkpoints. Yes. Is it something that may work? Uh, I don't think, I really think it starts back from the originating countries. We really need to tell people not, at least for now, I'm not saying never come to America. If they want to come to America, at least come with a visa or apply for a visa or graduate from university and get a job offer and come with a visa. Because I know it's hard, but right now, at least they publicize this um, these mishap, you know, it's all, I think it's all politics. Some people don't like Biden and they'll say, oh, too many people are here. But ultimately, they need to stop coming for the next few months. Not only that, we are really looking forward for some changes inland. Like we have anywhere between 15 to 20 to 30 million people that are holding DACA, that have TPS, that have no papers, that only have a work permit. We need to solve that problem. We have a lot of clients now when they first came, they just came, they want to make some money and leave. Now they have like two kids, three kids, they're doing really well. They file tax returns, they have no papers. Um, they, you know, they're doing very well. They own two houses maybe, um, the children are over 21, they still didn't get a green card or even a work permit because they've been here for a long time. These are people we really need to figure out how to help. They're not going to go. I know how uh, people say, oh, do self-deport, make them go away. They're not going to go away. It's just like Medicaid fraud, Medicare fraud, uh, food stamp fraud. They're not going to go away. So you need to solve this. And these are good people. And worse, as I call them, the silent majority of the perfect minority, because pe people always think the Korean people, the Chinese people, we're the, we're the perfect minority. Our kids all go to college, but the Latino people, they're really just, I just met a, a young couple, three children, uh, a child that's four years old, and the father works, the mother doesn't work. The four-year-old was raped with penetration by a 15-year-old um, stepchild of her of the mom's sister. She, um, they were they were totally broken because the, this these are cousins, right? And the kid is 15 years old. They totally trust the of course they trust the family. Is the this the is the is the, 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 the family? So and they have no papers. They don't speak English. Now the victim's advocate and the and the uh, district attorney is telling them because the boy is only 15 years old, he only have to take therapists, he don't have to spend one day in jail. On the other hand, they come and complain to me who also don't speak uh, in, uh, Spanish. But I look at stories like that, how far is it going to go? Because they don't, they have no papers, they're scared. So of course I can do a U visa, but it's not so much about visas, it's about justice, it's about Daughters should not be raped by another cousin just because 
she doesn't. I mean, the kid is a kid. It doesn't speak English. It's a four-year-old child, and the and the fifteen-year-old is an American born, speaks both Spanish and English, and he knows he's going to get away with it. That's why I'm so angry. But what is one lawyer's anger going to do? I see cases like this the whole day. I see girls, fifteen, sixteen years old, getting pregnant, having children. The hospital would ask, "Oh, where's the father?" And the father would like, "Oh, I'm not here." And the girl is too scared to report. It's a 19-year-old, 20. That's statutory rape. You know, I've seen so many of these cases, and these people are in America, and we need to help them. So at least to stop some crimes, stop, stop and they have stuck with two or three children. And sometimes the family is so embarrassed by this that they make the man marry the child because if they're married, then it's not illegitimate; it's legal now. So, but what does that got to do with it? You know. So I just I feel very bad. So, Thank you so um, much, Ms. Wong. Yes, and, and that's true. And also, um, well, we we find out uh, that it's not only people that are coming from Mexico or Guatemala or. Um, Central America, but also we see that they are some people are using uh, Mexico as a bridge to make it to the United States. So, um, uh, do you think that Mexico is probably in a ca chaos right now, or and they cannot handle this situation, and that's why this is going on, or it's just about all what's going to uh, under Uh, the surface, which is corruption somehow. There's a lot of money to be made because Homeland Security President Bush uh, in February of 2002 started the Homeland Security Act. In March of 2003, immigration went into Homeland Security and uh, beginning a 60% budget of Homeland Security. So in the Before that, immigration is a part of DOJ, Department of Justice. Of course, it's still corruption, but justice is justice. Immigration is immigration, which now is homeland, which means that if you watch the, the, the TV series Homeland, if you watch all these movies, it's all about terrorism. So they're mixing up chickens and cows and pigs coming to America with a virus, with guns and drugs and you know control of all these um metaphenomen or whatever, with human beings. So human beings are brains. You know, it's the maintenance of the of the research capability of America. So before February of 2002, at least the DOJ, they, they talk about old visa, they talk about helping people who have STEM, I mean, uh, math and science degrees. So at least those people will get a green card and get legal status. But once Homeland comes in, They control the student visa. Okay, imagine ICE, who does deportation, controls SAVAS, who controls the student visa. And student visa gives a lot of American economy a lot of money because American universities, they give a lot of scholarship. But for foreign students, we pay more and we don't get scholarships. So most American universities now, except the non-Ivy League, they make money from the whole world, the foreign students. And it's controlled by service, controlled by ICE, controlled by Homeland. So it doesn't make sense, but the public didn't know that. The public said, oh, you're illegal, you should be here. Oh, you're illegal, uh, your children should not even be American citizens, even though they're born here. So now America is in a mess, and of course, the Trump and the, you know, the January 6th issue and the abortion issue, it's all messed up. And worse is now they say, even though you're an American citizen, because your parents are illegal, you cannot even get any aid, even though the state allows funding or with no funding for uh, for abortion. So it doesn't, it's getting worse. I'm not even talking about abortion. I'm just talking about papers for someone to work in America and give them a social and driver's license. It's getting worse and worse. It's really getting bad. Yes, and uh, this is something uh, we cannot only talk about the United States, Ms. Wong, because uh, the United States is part of this world, and this world is going crazy. If you if you look at any country Columbia, in the world, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, yeah you, you will see that yeah. everything is crazy. Uh, there's a crisis. There is something going on uh, in the United States. We are in a better situation, but somehow the pandemic has brought us. Uh, a very bad uh, situation to the whole world financially talking. 
So uh, this is something that we need to uh, understand, not only blame a government, but also understand that people are uh, walking around the world. They are looking for a better possibility uh, somewhere, and they know that if I, if they can make it to the United States, they are in the in the uh, blessed land. So <laughs> this is why so many people want to come here, and that's why I actually came uh, a long time ago. So if you have any questions regarding to immigration, please don't forget to send it. Uh, or to send a text message or to write it down. Uh, the phone number of Ms. Wong is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. We have a question here, Ms. Wong. Um, hi, Juan and Margaret. My name is Nicole and I am a client. Thank you so much for last week. I follow you uh, up as you advised with the case worker regarding my petition, which fi was filed August 2017, and they are saying that the current date is 2015, which I honestly thought I, it was 2016 after looking at the visa bulletin, and they said they would not be able to do anything for another one or two years. You mentioned about getting your Congress representative to write a letter. My question is, what are acceptable grounds of application? Okay, so you are talking about the part A, if you look at the quota, the USDOS quota, the monthly quota which you have, part A is different from part B. Part B is when you started to pay the $120, the $325, but part that's part B. Part A means that you can only come to America after the date is open. That's why you can pay the money one or two years in advance. And then when the quota opens, you can come to America. That's part A and part B. Actually, there's something new um, that started under Obama years and years ago. That's only one part. You pay and then you can come. But now things are so slow that they say, well, we'll at least let you pay first. So we started, you know, the processing, but you cannot enter America until part A opens. So what you're talking about is probably part A is not open or even part B is not open. It, I won't even bother the congressional aides if part A is not open, because if you couldn't come to America anyway, there's nothing they or I or anybody can do for you. But at least as part B is open, you should at least get the package. So uh, then you need to call NBC. There's no more calling. They stopped the phone calls about three weeks ago. So you need to email them. And that's on my account. And you can email them. And you have to make sure CIS sent I-130 to, um, to USDOS, the National Visa Center. It's a little bit complicated, but really you don't. And I'm glad you took my advice. You don't need a lawyer. So for now, number one, email them and say, uh, you can only email them your IV, the immigrant visa number, or if you paid them. So look at that account. If you didn't even get that, maybe double check with USCIS to make sure that I-130 went to NVC because right now people are not working. They're not talking about immigration, is talking about hiring more people because they're starting a whole premium process and they can collect more money. But right now, American workers are just not working right. Even on fingerprint, there's more than 700,000, 800,000 people waiting in line for fingerprinting to get a green card. It's just horrible. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And well, you have the information. Ms. Wong has all the information as well. Uh, but you can just only call, give her a call, and she can get in touch with you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this uh, answer. The phone number, don't forget, is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. And she has offices in nine cities of the United States, Atlanta, Chicago, Cleveland, Columbus, Memphis, Minneapolis, uh, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina, and the phone number is 216-279-3984. Um, so, Ms. Wong, the next question is, Hi, I want to bring my brother from Bangladesh. I own a beer business in the United States. How long would it take? There are two ways to do it. One way is to file the I-130. You'll be a citizen. The brother and his whole family will be able to come to America sometime between 14 and 16 years. 
from the date of the filing of the I-130. Another way to do it is to find him a job offer because we are lucky you're from Bangladesh because you're from India and China. The line is so India is like nine, 10 years. China is about three, four years, five years. Uh, you're from Bangladesh, which means the line is only about one and a half years, if not current already. So if there's a business who's willing to offer a job with your brother, you can do an EB3 or EB2 case, and then there's a perm case, and then we, between two to three years, he'll be able to come, but he has to work for the business for at least six months after he entered America. The third way, of course, to come with a tourist visa or student visa, but there's no work permit on that. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. Don't forget, the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Okay, so we have a question here. Is Hello, Ms. Wong and Company. Uh, Hello. <laughs> is PD still yeah. available and how long that's a very good question go. pd is what we call the coil memo is it started on april 25th of 2022 it actually drove all of us not lawyers nuts because we have clients who want to do pd we have clients who don't we have clients who change their mind we have clients who say i don't want it i don't want it and later they say why did you advise me so pd is driving all of us nuts but you're right is there still pd that's a very good question texas judge just a week, two weeks ago, stop PD, not stop, but he's saying that Biden have no authority or our attorney general have no authority to do PD. Right now, it's a little bit stopped, but it's still on because PD merely means discretion. Immigration has always have discretion um, to admin close a case, to terminate a case, to but the problem is the work permit. So there is still PD. Uh, OCCs are still doing PDs in spite of the letter, but you just have to get more equities to argue that you want PD. But we have a lot of clients who don't want it anyway. So the answer is yes, PD is still on, but you need to do more work, not just a standard template. Um, yes, you need to push to, to get PD. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And don't forget, the phone number for more information is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984, over 45 years of experience with the attorney marketer W. Wong. So Robin is uh, sending this question. Hello, sir and madam. Both of you, thanks for your help always. With the new premium processing rule, does uh, no. it apply for EAD? It, it didn't come in yet. It didn't for EAD and TPS. It did not come in yet. We're seriously waiting. Also for the change of status from like a tourist visa to green card on an investment visa, they have not come in. But let me tell you what to do. TPS renewal. I don't think the automatic one year apply. I don't know, but I don't think so. But on EAD work permit on premium processing, you don't need premium because once you get the receipt notices with driver's license are expiring and your boss is pushing you to get them the letter, show them the automatic 340 day letter plus your receipt notice for 180 days. They will automatically all drivers, they should. Most driver's license place or all driver's license place should give you the one year automatic extension. We already have a lot of clients getting it. And also show your boss um, and your boss should extend your your I-9 work, I mean, allow you to work at least one extra year. That's what Biden did about two months ago to, uh, to help people on EAD. Don't pay premium processing because by the time you pay premium processing, you pay the $410 for the EAD. You don't make that much, you know. We are, we are on salary. That means that by the time you pay all this money, oh, my gosh. So I would not pay. I would show the boss automatic one year and the driver's license automatic one year. Okay, that's perfect. And they know. They already know. Uh, people know in the DMV. They know in the institutions that people are not getting the work permit on time. And actually, big companies like Amazon, they are letting people come back in to work because some of them were fired because they didn't they didn't have the work permit. But now with this uh, resolution of uh, President Biden, uh, then they were allowed to come back to work. Uh, also because there is a shortage of workers nationwide. So they need people to work and they know you want to work. And uh, uh, especially 
uh, immigrants, we do a good job when we go to work. So thank you so much uh, for this answer, Ms. Wong. Uh, don't forget, you can call the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Nicole Martins is saying thank you very much, Ms. Wong and Juan. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, message. And this is an interesting question uh, coming up. Uh, it says, hi, my ex-partner was very violent and beat me up about eight months ago. I called the police and he got arrested. I am waiting for my asylum decision since I already went to my interview. I am Venezuelan. He broke the restriction and came to my house. Uh, I called the police and he got arrested again. He put Three. me a restriction order and I have to go to court on the 12th of uh, July. Uh, so uh, could this affect my cases? Uh, it may help for three things. Number one, if he had abused, uh, you were from Venezuela. So if he came with you from Venezuela and he was an abusive spouse, definitely it affects you if you report to police and stuff, number one. Number two, if he's an American citizen and or green card holder and you had married him, and I don't know you did because it's an ex-partner, then you can do a Wawa case. Uh, but if he's an American, said yay. So I don't know if you married him. If you married him, uh, then you can do a Wawa case. Um, shouldn't have married him. And then, uh, but if not, it's okay. Um, if you never married him, absolutely do that U visa. And when you file the U visa, make sure you need to file the I-192. That's a waiver. You don't really need a waiver, but file it anyway. Right, you're not married. That's very good. So no Wawa file U visa and make sure you file both work permit, the C-14 and A-19. Sometimes, because client already have a C-8, I don't file the C-14 just to save them like $410. Um, that's very good. Um, uh, Commit suicide, that's very good. So in the meantime, show, I'm sorry you didn't marry him because that's a perfect Wawa case. Wawa case is faster because you can file the 360 together with the 485 and you get a work permit very fast, a green card faster. Um, but uh, but that's okay. Uh, he's American citizen, does not affect the asylum case as good, but do that U visa. Get, at least get a C-14 from the feederness. So make sure, if, uh, even though you already have a C-8, tell your lawyer uh, to file the C-14. Because sometimes it's safe money. Uh, some lawyers don't even ask. They just figure out, oh, just file an A-19. I will file both. Then you don't have to worry about the asylum. Because now, asylum from Venezuela, people are accepting how bad Venezuela is. The, you know, the news value is sort of gone. Uh, do you need a lawyer for that court? Um if it's the first one, you already have a work permit, tell them absolutely you need a lawyer, but at least for the first one, make sure you go and tell them you may need a lawyer for the second one. But normally it's always good to get a lawyer because nowadays judges are not nice. They're not happy about the virus. They're not, they don't want to go to work. They want to dismiss cases. And the OCC are more unhappy. And sometimes if you have a lawyer, you can actually go to the lawyer's office and do web next so you don't have to go to court and be intimidated. So these are little things that a lawyer can do for you. But it doesn't hurt if it's the first one. They always give the first MC a time to get a lawyer. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And, uh, well, don't forget that you can call the office. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. And that's the phone number where you can get in touch with the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, that has over 45 years of experience working and helping thousands of families every single year. And, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, this is this is what uh, is, is going on in the United States. So, Ms. Wong, I have a question in Spanish. Um, I haven't received... Uh, my receipt notice about my work permit. Uh, I am afraid that I'm going to lose my job and it expired in uh, May this year. I know there is an extension, but I haven't received the receipt notice of my work permit and it was sent in back in January this year. Absolutely. There are two things you can do. I would file a new one, at least get a new receipt. The receipt would come three weeks to six weeks, sometimes two weeks. Once you get the receipt, now you use the automatic extension, show your boss. Um, and I'm sorry, 
the January one, you should have got the receipt even in less than three months because January, something happened in immigration between May and June of last year to this year, February and March. Because cases that's filed in February and March, I've seen approvals on work permit, but cases filed in January is a problem or last year. So what you need to do is file a new one, spend that $410. Um, on the January one, I don't know if you bought a money order or you use a personal check or you go went to a bank and get a certified check, but whatever check you use, go back uh, to the check-in place or the money order place or your personal check. Just go to a bank, get the second page of the check and get the case number. You need that case number. If that check was lost or never cashed, that means it was never filed. But I would file one now. As long as it's legally timely filed, and today is June 30th, so you'll get there by July 1st or June 31st, then if it's not timely filed, it's also, if I remember you said something expired in May, if it's timely filed, you get that automatic extension. If it's not timely filed, you don't, but maybe explain to your boss and i'm really sorry about that because in january what did you do between january and may you couldn't just wait you know you have to push and push that's what immigrants like us do so and i'm sorry about that but file immediately because my gut is uh, it was lost wow that's uh that's bad and yeah probably if it was expiring in may uh it's not time we filed yeah today is yeah. june already it's not time we filed so i don't think yeah. the medic extension applies to you Oops. yeah so I think this person filed in January is what she stated. Uh, so it was five months before the expi the expiration date. So right. that was yeah. timely filed. Yeah, get yeah. that check and get this receipt number because there's no way. I mean, you could try it, but immigration would probably brush you off mm -hmm. because they say there's no case number. Yeah, that's true. And thank you so much, Ms. Wong. I have a last question for today. We know we are almost uh, on time to leave. Uh, hi, my wife. Uh, 601 was approved in Nigeria. Now consular process, how long? She has been there for four years. Awesome. So it depends. 601A means that your wife was in America and you leave just for two weeks and come back. Nigeria is known to be slow. They don't care. So they don't respond to you. So 601 means that here she already had the visa call and it was she was deported. Okay, I got it. No. It has to be 10 years. So if she was deported in 2018, she cannot come back until 2028. Deport, it depends on how long she was out. I'm pretty sure it's a 10-year case. So not only do you need the 601, you also need the 212. Um, if there's no permit, it's complicated. If there's no permit, and Nigeria is horrible. I mean, the American embassy is really bad. They just ignore you. So it depends if, for example, she came in 20. 15 and got deported in 2018 and you are an american spouse and there was no prior spouses i'm sure i'm on 30 is approved because 601 is approved so it could be 601a is approved or 601 uh then where's the 212 because if she's deported you need a 212. so expeditious removal you you need to stay there for five years deportation you need to stay there for 10 years but if you're an American citizen spouse and there was no perm bar, you, you need the 212 to come back and you only said 601. So due to 212 right now, running time is nine months to six uh, to uh, one and a half, two years. But if there's no perm bar, it's only a deport. How much do you charge? Wait, uh, it's not how much you charge, it's yeah, what I do know. you do? What's the case? Like this, the Nigerian case is a problem because there's no 212 and that there's no perm bar. You should be able to come back if the 212 and 601 is approved it take two and a half years after leaving after deportation and she's there for four years so it depends on the case how much do i charge for 601 i wish i can tell you it's not so much i always tell my my yeah. own lawyers my own paralegals is anybody can do a form anybody can do a work permit you fill it on 765 you go to uscis all the instructions are there it's the thinking behind it and yeah. for the lawyer to think you need to know what's the hardship do you have qualifying relative do you have parents or spouses you know or is that a second or third marriage and how did your spouse get the green card like nigeria there's a lot of a lot of nigerians they marry someone get a green card and remarry the first wife and that's a problem so these are things that you need to talk to a lawyer Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for your time. And our time is up for today. So thank you for your answers. And if 
our people, our audience have more questions, please don't forget that you can call the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. So, Ms. Ron, see you next week on Wednesday. We're going to have a new uh, live show in Spanish and then on Thursday in English. So, take care. Have a good time there. Enjoy the summer and see you soon. Thank you so much. And don't forget that you can uh, talk to the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, on the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984, attorney Margaret W. Wong, the expert in immigration cases.